Everybody and welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. Wow, these new, I like. By the way, I like these new headphones, Matt. They're super comfortable. Yeah, there's like a, it's like a, it's like foamy it's like and soft. Actually, speaking of, will you turn him down before he yells in my ear a little bit? Ba da ba 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 da ba ba ba. How was that? That wasn't that loud. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, but yeah, uh, how you doing, dude? Good, man. Sorry. Yeah, I uh, I woke up a little late. I had a little stuffy nose and a sore throat. Had the fan on me all night, so mm-hmm. you know. But tried a new restaurant last night in the Cosmo uh, on the strip called Momo Fuku. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, delicious. Okay. And some of the best pork belly I've ever had. So let me just see if I got this right. Your the your weakness is a fan. Well, you know, like <laughs> weakness. Wind. You know, is that like what the, takes you down? Well, if the fan is directly on you at full blast. Yeah, that bothers me. Yeah. In the know, face. Yeah. Oh, you also, know me. Yeah, you also know I'm a mouth breather. So like, yeah. You know what I don't understand in hotels is when are they going to like, um, and I could be, maybe I'm the only one who doesn't like it, but I don't think I am. They set up the vent so it blows directly on the bed when you're sleeping. Yeah. I don't need the fan to blow directly on my face. No. I just need the room to be cold. Yeah, I agree. I'm the same way. I've just never understood why they point it directly at your face. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't like it either. Like I like the only time I like it is when like the AC's gone or AC's on while we're gone and I come back and my bed is like super cold. Like I like that. But at the same time, I'd rather not Yeah, have... but it's gonna be cold if the room's cold. Yeah, but not as cold if the air is directly on it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But like yeah. that would be the only that's my only thing. But other than that, I hate it. I, I I've never understood that. Why when they design it, they're like, where's the fan blow? Cool. Put the bed right underneath that. That makes no sense to me because then your options are either have that Arctic blast on your fucking face. And by the way, guys, it's not just an Arctic blast, especially at a hotel. You're dealing with an HVAC system where you're getting everybody else's cookies right yeah. in your fucking face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is a big yucky for me. Yep. But not only that, so I either have to do that or pull the covers over my mouth and 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 do the the my breath under the covers for an entire and night. Also, it gets really hot. Like, yeah, it gets hot. And then you're breathing in just stink air and I fart in my sleep. And yeah. You ever Dutch oven yourself? By accident. Yeah. Well, not by accident. I honestly, listen, if I'm being honest. Hold on, hold on. Can I guess what you're about to say? Sure. You had never been Dutch oven before, so you wanted to Dutch oven yourself to see what it was like. No, I hadn't thought that much about a Dutch oven, but I do like smelling my own farts. So the best place to do it is under the covers. You don't like to smell your own farts? Like to? Like enjoy? Like enjoy? Yeah. No. You don't enjoy the smell of your own fart? I, no, I don't enjoy the smell of any fart. That's me. I'm not going to lie to you. That might be the oddest thing I've ever heard you say. You don't enjoy relish you when you are in a car by yourself and you fart you roll down the window if it's nasty yeah absolutely nah i sit in it you don't sit in it matt chime in am i wrong you don't like the smell of your own farts the happy medium is look i don't the happy I, medium is not i don't to run, inhale ass air like i don't i don't fart in the bag and carry it around with me and huff it all day but but if I'm in a car or in my bed, I'll definitely trap it to make sure I get the full capability of it. You know what this sounds like? It sounds like, you know, so I don't know if you know, but if you poop in a, j- a jar and you close it and you let it ferment, you can actually smell it like a week later and get high off of it. Did you know that? What? Yeah. That's not true. Hold up. I, I, don't, I wouldn't even know what to Google. Can you get high off of your own fermented poop? By the way, I don't want that in my search, but it makes sense being in your search. It w- honestly wouldn't be the weirdest thing in my search. That's what I'm saying. The, the last time I looked into your search history, it was at a family dinner. It said shit and pool. So this is pretty similar to that. I, I mean, can you get high off of fermented poop? I can't believe I just Googled that. Um, oh, let me put on my glasses that aren't as cool. I would really love it if you just put it over your other glasses. Oh, never mind. 
That'd be hilarious. Or you put those on and then put those back on. Gen Chem, J E N K E M, is an inhalant and hallucinogen created from fermented human waste. In the mid 1990s, it was reported to be a popular street drug um, among Zambian youth created by placing feces and urine in a bottle or a bucket, sealing it with a balloon or lid, and leaving it to ferment in the sun. Afterwards, they would inhale the gases generated. In November 2007, there was a moral panic in the United States after widespread reports of GenCam became becoming a popular recreational drug in middle and high schools across the country. Yeah, you would figure that out in middle school because nobody flushed it. Yeah, well, yeah, but so it's there's not, just shit sitting there. Yeah, but it's also not like it's it's got to be sealed in order. I mean, I guess it doesn't need to be sealed in order to ferment, but it helps if it's sealed. Several sources reported that the increase in American media coverage was based on a hoax and on faulty internet research. The, I. I, uh, I mean, here's the problem. Part of me wants, no. part of me wants to try it just to see, I mean, it says powerful. I, can I be honest? Hallucinogen. Can I be honest? What kind of, here? what kind of, because you know, you're the, what you hallucinate depends on what you take. Yeah. It sounds like it would be a shitty trip. Ah, dun, 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 dun. I, I, I am not against Gen Chem. Oh my, that, yo, there, those, well, listen, let me just finish. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, go ahead. I'm not against it. Luckily, I have enough money for mushrooms and acid where I don't need to shit in a two liter bottle. However, if times get tight, I, knowing that I have a basically endless supply of hallucinogens on me all the time doesn't make me feel terrible. If I get stranded on a on a desert island and I knew I could still trip, that would make it so much better. I I don't even know how to respond to any of this. The, like, first of all, it's called ingenuity. Is it? it? I mean, somebody who couldn't figure out, they're like, I got no money. They were middle school, right? They're like, nobody's selling me mushrooms. Let's start huffing poop. Yeah, I hope no one's selling mushrooms to a middle schooler. Well, somebody is. I mean, not me. I hope not too, but... You hope not. I hope somebody's not. Oh, oh, oh. I thought yeah. you said, I hope... I thought you were saying, like, I hope not. Like, I hope I'm not the one selling mushrooms. No, I don't sell drugs. That's I true. I just do them. True. I don't know if I've ever sold a drug. Can't relate. I held on to a bunch of ecstasy in my closet once, but that was for somebody else. Got it. You never actually, like, even if you had, like, something spare and just, like, sold it to a buddy for, like, a... Who's got spare drugs? It's drugs that I'm not doing at the present moment doesn't mean that I don't want them. No, that's fair, but that's not... You've never... Like, if you have extra... You never had, like, I've extra... never had extra drugs. Huh. That's like having extra money. Who has extra... I don't have extra. I just have stuff I'm not using right now. But I, 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 when I buy drugs, it's because I would like those drugs. Yeah. I'm not that I, amount of drugs. Yeah. And I, now, to be fair, since weed has come to me pretty easily, mm. I, um, I've given you a bunch. Totally. Right. Totally. But, but I, oh, by the way, dude, I can't tell you who or when, but your boy is gonna, is starting his own line of, uh, marijuana. Gangster. Yeah, dude. Pretty fire. So cool. That's pretty fire. I was on a call yesterday to design the packaging and all that stuff. It is so fucking cool. Super dope. Yeah, I'm pretty that's excited. Like a, that's like a bucket list thing. Yeah, I, you know what? I like, you know, like, I just want to take some swings that I haven't taken. Yeah. Like, I took not? that swing with crypto and it ate a bag of dicks. Um, But... I am going to take the swing with the weed, which is something that I'm more into. Yeah. I, I and have more knowledge about. Yeah. But also, well, don't, I don't know anything about crypto. Right. And so I didn't push it at all. I felt bad pushing it because it just never felt like me. Yeah. It just never, that's not something that's ever jived, not crypto itself, but that type of thing is not something that felt good for me to push. But yeah. this feels right on par. Yeah, I got a lot of DMs when you were doing the crypto thing. Yeah, man. Look, dude, I don't give a fuck what anybody else thinks. Yeah, fucking right. And I, I'm not telling you how to try to make your money, and you should probably not try to tell other people how to make theirs. Facts. And I want 
I I don't want to ever be like, oh, I wonder what that was like. I just want to try it. Yeah, absolutely. It didn't work. Yeah. And and people who were like, you lost a fan. One, I didn't. You weren't a fan. Yeah. If you're if you're leaving over that, you weren't a fan. So a fan we'll me. see you later. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do want to say off the top. I did get a bunch of messages already so far from people um, who are, uh, you know, a last a couple of weeks on the pod, I mentioned that um, we'll be giving away like ten tickets a show to families or people, you know, families who either can't can't afford to come to a show or feel like a show might help mend a relationship or anything like that. Um, so I've got a bunch of emails at heymanpod that's man with three a's heymanpod at gmail.com and i read through a bunch of them today and um for those of you who reached out the answer is yeah yeah you're you you reached out and i'm on board and and we can't wait to see you at the shows um and for those of you who also uh mentioned how um thankful you were that i keep my ticket prices low yeah you're very welcome, man. I remember being there. I remember wanting to um, see a show and not being able to. And so I'm happy to be able to provide that for you. Like I said, I'm, I make, I make good money. I, I'm not an overly greedy dude. I would always take more money, but I'm not going to take it at the expense of the people who listen to this podcast or who enjoy our comedy and want to come and, and, and I'm not going to do, make it cost prohibitive for them. So now listen, there are going to be ways where I will try to make up a little bit of the money because I pay out more than I ever have in my life. Yep. So I'll do meet and greets now where the first part of the meet and greet, which is VIP meet and greet is you got to pay for. But after that VIP meet and greet is over, I'll come out to the line if you want to wait around and take pictures with you guys. But there's just a time limit. What was happening for both Jacob and I, we were doing meet and greets that were free and everybody from the show was getting in line. Yeah. And so we were going straight from first show to second show, no rest. And I'm old, man. I need a little rest. <laughs> so I just needed to add a little buffer in there. But as far as ticket prices, man, if you want to come to the show, I'm going to keep those super low for everybody. Um, and that's what I got. There you go. Fire. Um, also, I did get a, or on the Hey Man Instagram page, I also did see a DM from someone, so make sure to throw him in, into that loop as well. Okay. Um, but also, on that same meet and greet note, I he may do the first part of the paid meet and greet uh, with the VIP, but I will always be outside after the shows selling merch, taking photos with anybody who wants to come up and say what's up. So, um, you know, yeah, and I'll put that out there as well. He'll come out a little later after the VIP is done, but... You know, I'll always be out there. I always want to chat, say what's up, and uh, thank you guys for your support as always. Dude, the pictures that Trevor, your old, my oldest son, by the way, everybody, is sending of the, the his new daughter. That little baby is so cute, man. Yeah, we FaceTimed her, or uh, uh, Jesse, his wife, called us last night and uh, today while we were out. So cute. Super cute, baby. We're going to see them in a couple weeks. I know, I know. I can't wait. We're gonna meet. We're gonna meet her around Thanksgiving. I hope. I think probably Christmas is probably when. Okay. Probably more like. We were told Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, we'll not, not unless they want to pay for one of them. <laughs> Tax. So Christmas it is. Christmas. It uh, is. Um. I, listen, dude. It's so funny. I um. I want to just address something real quick. Uh, this thing about somebody. Uh, I got a. Uh, be. Uh, how do I put? That's the best way to get into it. I want to address the idea of haters. Okay? Okay. Okay. I think that term is pretty dumb. I think you call somebody a hater when they disagree with the person that you are li that you like. Right? I think it, it can't be it's yeah. used a lot that way. Yeah. Okay. It, it, this is the way. that That's how I'm addressing it. Yeah. Right? If you're somebody who is always talking negative about somebody else, that's a hater. Yeah. But if you just don't like, and not personally, but just don't like an artist or don't like a restaurant or don't like a, that's just, you don't like everything. Yeah. So I, it, it makes me, it's super funny to me when I hear people like, don't be a hater. You're like, I just have an opinion that's different than yours. Yeah. 
And I, this is this, whatever this is, is just not my cup of tea, but you all, here's the thing. Like you get caught in this crazy, especially on, on the internet, you get caught in this right in the middle of dude, you gotta be honest. You gotta be authentic. Tell us what you think. Right. Don't say you like everything. That's bullshit. Not everybody likes everything. And then you say you don't like something and people are like, stop being a hater. Yeah. And my message to everybody would be, hey, just allow people to have their own fucking opinions. Yeah. And like what they like. Yeah. You can like, like what you like and not like what you don't like. And them liking what they like doesn't affect you in any some sort of way. No. And if you're letting it affect you, you're the problem. Well, well, people, people, you know, all you got to do is look at politics. Like if you say something that criticizes Trump or AOC or Kamala Harris, uh -huh. those people come at you um, because it's almost when you like something and somebody else tells you you don't like it, if you've emotionally invested and you insult that thing, yeah. it almost feels like you're insulting the person. Like a, like a personal attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. That's how I feel about J. Cole. I'm not going to lie. Is it? Yeah. People are like, I don't like J. Cole. I'm like, well, everyone has their opinion, but you're wrong. Like, yeah, because but you... I'm, a, but, I'm emotionally attached to yeah. him as my favorite artist ever. And I mean it. I do mean it like mostly as a joke. 95% as a joke. But right. my 5% is if you can't, if you listen to the music and you don't appreciate it, you don't have to like it, but if you don't appreciate that it's good music, he's got good lyrics, and he's a good... He's a talented artist. That's where I have the disagreement. Yeah. Because that for me is like, why do you not like it? Oh, he only talks about this, this, and this, and this. And I'm like, okay, now you're just being picky. You're just, that's, to me, that's being a hater. Yeah. Or if like you can't admit that he's a good artist, he's talented, he's great lyrics, good beats, and you just don't like him because he's J. Cole, that's a hater. But yeah, other than that, like you like what you like. Yeah. But if you don't like J. Cole, you're wrong. Yeah, I mean, um, listen, dude, I, I can give you a couple of examples of people that that are very popular that I just don't get. I know a couple. Johnny Cash. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I uh -huh. like if a song comes on, maybe. But the fact that there was an album of covers of his songs, and I liked almost all the covers more than the original. It's just a. Uh, I get it. I get why. Yeah. But not for me. Yeah. Look, Drake. Do do do. I think Bob Dylan. Is one for me. He buy, uh, yeah, I like old Bob Dylan. Jackson would would be like, yeah. You, my, so my buddy Jack, like who passed away, he's Bob Dylan was his favorite. Yeah. Artist. If I said that to his face, he would be like, hey, sit down. I'm going to play you. He would just go through the discography. Yeah. And I'd be like, Jack, I appreciate that you love him. I just don't like his music that much. If, if I was going to go, okay, if I go top four for me. Mount Rushmore of? Top four. Or let's just go top three of artists that I are very popular that I don't get Johnny Cash, okay. Drake, yeah. Beyonce. And let me just say this. I don't, I understand all of it. Yeah. But it's just not. Nah, I'm turning. The, I'm, I'm, I'm walking out of a room yeah. on all three. Uh, I would probably Except go. Except Beyonce's country album. I really like it. Fair enough. Um, I would probably go Bob Dylan. I'm going to get some for this Taylor Swift. And, uh, Ooh, I don't know if I have a third one right off the top of my head, but for sure, Taylor Swift, Bob Dylan. You don't like her music? Eh, it's not my cup of tea. I just like... Yeah. Is it the music, the lyrics, both? I think it's just like the type of music. It's just not really what I'm into. And also, it's the fan base. You're letting the fan base... No, the, the fan base for me kind of is just like, yeah, they're all 13-year-old white girls. They are not, dude. I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean. Like, yeah. It, she it, has such a wide-ranging fan base. Right. But 100%. But those Swifties who are diehard just like the Beehive for Beyonce, yeah. if I say one bad thing, it's like, oh, no, you're wrong, and this and that. How could you not like this? It's the same thing. It's like, yeah, it's that's, just, that's, that's what I'm saying. Is like, yeah. So for me, like, I'm just not a big Swifty or a Taylor Swift fan. Yeah. I will say, when there's occasionally you're in a bar and like a, you know, a, 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 an iconic Taylor Swift song comes on, like, sure, I might get into it a little bit, but it's not like something I want to go into and play in, in my car. Yeah, dude. I, I understand not playing in your car. I, I, sh I, I, yeah, that's interesting that you would say her. It's interesting. I, I, I think it's interesting to use those two people because I think they're both great lyricists. Uh, yeah. Hands down. 100%. I think they're both ly great lyricists, but, but both yeah, great I, musicians, like overall, if you look at it, not talking about like numbers, Great lyricists, great musicians, good for music, 
Just not big fans. Yeah, but that is what I love, man. It's what I love the most about art is that subjective. You get to pick and choose what you like, man. Yeah. And let people like what they like, God damn it. Yeah. You don't have a third one? Uh I'd have to think for a second. I'm trying to uh, I'm uh I'm trying to think of some like like modern ones. Oh, oh, uh, you might not understand this one, but for me, like and for people my age, Tyler the Creator. Yeah, I don't never I, I like I was in it a little bit at the beginning with like Yonkers and all that shit, but like as his stuff went on, I like a couple songs here and there, but like I'm just not a big Tyler Creator fan. Again, right. I think he's a good rapper. I think his beats, some of his beats are pretty good. Just not into his music. All right. Um, listen, I have a couple of um I have a couple of emails. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna And I, I wanted to get to them. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to get to them because, you know, l- look, we I, I hadn't looked at them in a while. So there's a, a bunch of emails, not as many questions, a lot of very sweet comments and very nice. So thank you all so much. But if you do want to ask some questions, heymanpod at gmail.com, heymanpod at gmail.com, man with three A's. By the way, did you watch the Olympics? I'm back. Sorry. Um, yeah, I watched a little bit. Uh, we watched, or not together, but we were uh, that gold medal U.S. Olympics game for the bas- bas- yeah. basketball. Steph Curry is a psychopath. Yeah, um, but just in general, did you watch the Olympics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I usually watch uh, gymnastics. Um, I usually tune into handball because I just think it's such, I don't know why. It's like a very interesting. And yeah. Did you watch sport. the break dancing? Are we going to talk about the Australian girl? I have to tell you, I, that was, if you, if you, here's what, if you say, what are the three most memorable moments at this Olympics? For me, Steph Curry shot. The dude who did the gun with his hand in his pocket. Oh, the just, Turkish guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. my fucking God. So good. And the break dance. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I, and I think that break dancing girl, man, is going to... I'm dying to see what type of endorsement she gets. I don't know. I, I would think if I was going to endorse something, if I had seizure medicine, I would right away endorse... I would be like, hey, can you come endorse this seizure medicine. Yeah, I was going to say like some like baby, like some like anti-chafing powder. Yeah. That one of her rolling around in a circle on the ground looks like she's got like a bad itch. Yeah, a Swiffer. Uh, that would be a good one. Yeah. Um, I, you know what she looked like? It looked like she thought she was on fire and she was just trying to put herself out. It, she was like Ricky Bobby in Talladega Nights. It was the craziest. And here's, I have so many questions about it, but one of them, and I know this is airing a couple weeks after the Olympics, but one of my big questions was like, did she have a coach? And did they look at videos of what breakdancing looks like? Yeah. And and if they did, were they like, nah, son? Yeah. I, 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 I got a better take on this. Yeah. And I also have another question. Was she the only one who tried out? That- like, 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 here's again, here's the thing. I'm talking about this as a spectator, like most people do for sports. She made it to the Olympics. She definitely was better than I would have been. A hundred percent. Nah. I think so. Nah. I mean, you could roll around on the ground. Extra co- like the confidence to go out and do it, that to know, great. to know what your your stuff is gonna be and to know what you're going up against. The confidence to go out and still go hundred percent. I applaud and I love and I can I, I love, love, love it. But was there really nobody else who tried out? Have, women? I, I don't know. I I mean, there was. Like, like she. Are you going to pull it up? She was the one who qualified? But this is what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. It's like, in Australia, what qualifies as breakdancing? And who's the coach? And what were, when the judges were watching, were they like, how are we supposed to score this? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was. Pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. I really hope that she, both her and the gun guy, the gun guy, man, was, to me, the winner of the entire. The, yo. He had the craziest flex. Like, all those shooters, like, there's a video game called Valorant, which you don't know about. It's, like, a new one. But they all have, like, it's, like, Valorant agents, and they're all dressed up in these crazy clothes, and they look like they're, like, like, like Tekken players, almost. Every shooter in one of those, in those, uh, in that game or that round or event had this crazy clothes on, these eyeglasses, one to stop a blur, an eye patch. 
And this dude just came up, hand in the pocket, nothing, and raised it up and got silver. Dude, he looked like he just shotgunned a natty light. <laughs> See, you know what I mean? The it just was, took out his gun. I was like, oh, is this the auditions for Australia? Yeah, so this was uh, one of the uh, contenders against Ray Gun, who was auditioning to be in the Olympics. And Ray Gun was chosen over this person. Ray Gun is the Australian woman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. But terrible breakdancing name, right, Ray so, Gun. So here, yeah. here is the uh, actual, like, uh, competition to Ray Gun. All right. Hey, Molly! Already better. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, not as entertaining, though. What? Oh. What? That's not true. This is the competition? Yep. Wait, is that a dude? Wasn't Ray Gun a woman? Yes. This can't be right. Uh, this was one of the qualifiers for the Olympics. But but, uh, but that's but a Matt, but, but Matt, this isn't this is an actual break dancer. Yeah. So I think probably what Australia did was they were like, look, we're not gonna win unless we really mix it up. So let's I think they shot their shot. And I and, like it. And this 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 wouldn't have got any press. No, this was a woman, and probably still is. Yeah. Um. Th but but th I mean, by the way, guys, I'm not wearing my glasses, so I just couldn't. But but I will tell you that if if she had gone out there, she's not getting nearly the amount of press. Australia is getting huge press for the roll around girl. Yeah. There's there's the tweet says, could there um uh, make it make sense? Could there be any more evidence? That Ray Gun was picked for her DEI and grievance studies academic accolades. I don't know what that means. I don't. I, well, I know what DEI means. What? Help me. It's basically diversity inclusion. Got it. But but the Olympics is not about that. The Olympics is about well, who's best. Well, the Olympics is about that because every country competes, so it is diverse. Appar enough. Apparently, Ray Gun was a uh, interpretive dancer, and she was like a big feminist in Australia, which is. Oh. Part of why she got chosen. She got chosen because she's a feminist? A feminist interpretive dancer. Right, but being a feminist has nothing to do with being a break dancer. And interpretive dance and break dance couldn't be more different. It, but also, like, look, there are... I, I, I would say, like, this is why we have a problem in the world. Nobody sees gray. It's all black and white. Yep. So are there places where DEI is important? Yes, there is. Absolutely. Are there places where it has no place? Yes. Yes. And that is in events, sports, Olympics, where you're just going for, like, I, I well, you should always be going for the best anyways. I just, it's hard. You know, but this, this is a real blatant. Yeah. Oh, you know who else was one of my one of my favorite moments from the uh, Olympics was that uh, that white dude, that gymnast with the gla the glasses. He can't really he can't really see well. Yeah, and so he literally had to wait all day for his what's it called? It's not a beam. It's not the beam. It's the it's the pummel bar, pumice, pummel pummel horse. Th that that's the long one with the two. That's what bars I do to my them. dick. Gross. <laughs> that's like that medium sized <laughs> bar with the two or medium sized thing with the two bars. In there. Yeah. Bro waited. It's like one of the most iconic images from the Olympics. It's just him like sleeping, laying back with his glasses on, waiting to compete all day. That one. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. This dude literally had to wait all day to do his event. And he was the last event that helped the U.S. Gym, this, the gymnastics yeah. claim a medal. Yeah, I remember. He had to sit there like this the whole day. You know who we forgot was a real winner of the Olympics is, is Big Dick Dude. Oh, the pole vaulter. Big Dick Dude is definitely. And by the way, the fact that he's a pole vaulter is like the best. Yeah. Anyways, let's get to your emails real quick. I want to transition into the not so cool glasses. Um, Jacob, get your phone out. The first email is from Robin, who has an Urban Dictionary term she would like us to to look up. Okay. Robin says clam jam, L M F A O. 
Thanks, Jacob. So let me guess what a clam jam is. Robin also was somebody who uh, emailed about tickets for her and her sisters to the a Fresno show. So let me just read this out loud. Um, hey there, boys. Love you both. Listen to the podcast every week. I love you, Josh, since the pandemic started. Thank you. Uh, favorite joke is Jacob going to Mexico. Super funny. Uh, my mama loved you. She passed last year. I have three sisters. And after mama passed, we fought like sisters do. And we've only just reunited with one another. This would just solidify it, us, solidify it for the four of us. Thank you for considering us. Robin, you are in. When the Fresno show gets closer, hit me up. And you and your sisters have got tickets. Uh, sorry to hear about your mom. I hope the you guys coming to the show will help bring you guys together a little bit. So there, there you go. go. Um, all right, Clam Jam. Yeah. I get five guesses. You get five questions and a guess. And do you, okay, before I get to the question, do you feel like this is one that I might be able to get? Yes. Okay. I think this is the only, the only clue I'm going to give you. No, no, I don't need No, clue. not a clue. Just, it's not a clue. It's not going to, just don't overthink it. I'm not. Clam vagina. Great job. Jam means one of two things. So I'm going to ask, is jam meaning like strawberry jam? No. Jam means like cram it in there. No. Jam means like music? No. That's three questions. So jam is where I'm, clam jam is got nothing, it's got to do with juice? Nope. Coming out of the clam? Nope. That's four. Wow. I thought I had this one because I'm thinking about the word jam. You said don't overthink it. Jam means to like jam something in there. Yeah, sure. Or jam means to like, let's jam, let's get out of here. Or it means like strawberry jam. And none of those are true. None of those are correct. Wow. Uh, so also a jam can be like a band all playing together. So is it a bunch of vaginas together? What? Like 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 a jam band. Like everybody's queefing at the same time. I was just going to say like a queef quartet. <laughs> yeah, like the queef quartet. Yeah. Like a barbershop quartet. An acapella queef band. Uh, barbershop queef tet. Yeah, exactly. Okay, no. No. Okay, so now. You got a guess. I have a guess. Okay, a clam jam is when something gets caught in the vagina and it gets jammed up and so nothing gets in or out. Clam jam. That's incorrect. Clam jam is the female version of a cock block. All right. Yeah. Robin, I take the tickets back. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. Robin. Hey, listen, everybody. And by the way, I like clam jam, but, uh, I was, let's, let's, let's put a caveat on sending urban dictionary. I'd like them to be grosser. Yeah. 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 I'm not gonna lie. I saw clam jam when, yeah. I was, when we first started doing it and I just decided not to. All right. Uh, this is a question for, this is from Devin Kramer question for Jacob as an up and coming comedian. What is the best part of being a comedian and where has your dad inspired you the most? Thanks. This is Devin. Um, well, Devin, thank you for your question. Uh, best part about being in, uh, did he say a, a comedian or an up and coming comedian? He said as an up and coming comedian, how's your short term memory as an up and coming comedian, what is the best part of being a comedian? Okay. And where has your dad inspired you the most? Uh, I think my, I think the best part would also be my favorite part is like, it's just getting those laughs on stage. Like the first time I got a laugh on stage when I was up there by myself, it's like, it's like addictive. It's like a high. It's, it's so much fun. And also another best part is like finally finding a joke you've been looking for or a punchline for a story. Like I just found a punchline for a joke I've been working on for like two or three months and I just found it two weeks ago and it's the one I've been looking for. And so that for me, it's like very fulfilling that best part of being able to finally lock something down and find something you've been looking for. Um, where my dad has inspired me the most, I think it's just like, it's, it's putting in the effort. It's putting in the work, like knowing that now this doesn't come easy. Like he inspired, he did inspire me to go do open mics. And like it, it was my decision at the end of the day, but he did inspire me to do it because he told me, he was like, yo, you don't have to because you get enough stage time with, with him. But if you keep doing my shows, Josh Wolf shows, you're, you're going to, you're going to eventually get stuck right here. 
the open mics will help you do this even if you eat dicks for the first year of them. And I've eaten dicks pretty much for the first six, month, first six to eight months that I've been doing them. But they have definitely, immensely gotten me better, helped me find jokes, and, and uh, just helps me work around with my all-around stage presence. So that for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, okay. I'm not going to say anything because he asked you the question. Yeah. All right. That's a good one. Here we get another question from ooh, Stockton Irvin. What a great name. What happened to not first name, last name? I didn't say that this time because I knew I wasn't going to. Oh, well, okay. Stockton Irvin sounds like a race car driver. Sounds like, sounds like a, a really good AAA baseball player. Yeah, it sounds like his name was Irvin Stockton, and he was like, nope. Yeah, full of Brody Stevens. Stockton Irvin. Do you ever go by Stock? What would be your nickname be? What would you want your nickname to be if you were Stockton Irvin? If I was tall, I would go Beanstalk. Ooh, good one. That's what I would do. I would be like, I'm stalking you. Get it? Okay, let's go ahead and get the question. I'm 21 and just found out that my girlfriend is pregnant. <sighs> good for you, dude. I make it. I'll make a decent living as an HVAC technician. Uh, so I'm not worried about taking care of the family, but I'm extremely nervous about being a father. Do you have any advice outside of the generic, it'll all just happen and be okay that I've been getting lately? Yeah, man. I do, actually. Have fun. Hey, dude, here's the best part. I was a young dad. You got so much energy. Just goof. Have fun. Make sure your kid is enjoying themselves. Don't stress out about things that you can't worry about. And just remember that whatever you come up against, people have been having babies now for a long time. I don't know the exact date, but little babies have been coming out for a couple of years and everybody seems to figure it out. So no matter what the stress is, no matter what the worry is, know that people have done it a million times before you and it's up to you how you want to handle it. You can handle it as a stressed out parent or you can handle it as like, this is the only time in my life that I'm going to get to do this. So I'm going to have a fucking good time with it. That's all I would say, man. I, I would just not, I would not stress so much about it at all and just enjoy the ride because it's a good time. Yeah. And the one thing I'll say is congrats on the sex. Oh yeah. Yeah. You probably did have sex to have the baby. Yeah. Uh, can I do, by the way, I've been getting a lot of looks on the mustache. Dude, I... I want to shave my mustache or like part of it so bad. I just don't know why I have it. You, do you like it when the, the hair comes over the lip? No, I hate it. Just trim it up. I know I, I want to, but I just keep them like, yeah, I'll get it tomorrow. Yeah. I, I, I can't stop like touching my face to like try and move it out of the way. Yeah. I like, this is the first, this is the longest my mustache has ever been. I, this is how terrible I grow a mustache. This has taken me probably two, not no joke, two years. I haven't shaved it in two years. This is as good as it gets. But right now... You've got a really long one. You see that? you got yeah. like a really long hair like on the mustache. I can see it on your profile. I want to just... I'm thinking about keeping the handlebar and then just keeping sideburns and shaving everything else. Um, and, no, thanks. Well, the only reason I'm not going to do it because I'm pretty sure your mom wouldn't have sex with me if I did. That's a good point. It is a huge... It is the point. Yeah, it is a huge problem. Yeah. It, it would be the only reason why that sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to do this or I want to wear this. And I'm like, no, oh, but then I'm never going to have sex, which yeah. is a big bummer for me. Yeah, it sounds like it. How, how much of a bummer is it for you to hear me talk about wanting to have sex with? Yeah, you're a grown person. You guys have been married for 20 years. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. Yeah. I do, mean, you want, do you want me to talk no, about it some more? No, as long as we're not going into detail, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> You, so no to the detail? You want detail from me? No. That's what I thought. I don't, I, I don't know. It's the one thing we don't talk about, dog. Yeah, it's really, it's not necessary. Zero necessity in it, yeah. actually. Like, like, don't even know why it would come up, unless you're trying to torture me. Which, which, but, but like. But even then, you have a line for yourself, even. Yeah, because I respect your mom. So I'm not. And also, I, you don't want to talk about it with me. Yeah, but I would to make you uncomfortable, but I, but I. Because I like that more than the that more than whatever. Yeah, I, I like making people uncomfortable, but I I would never just because I res yeah, I have too much respect for your mom. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, dude. By the way, um, this uh, I can't I can't talk about that yet. Damn it! What? No, I can't talk about it. I 
Can't talk about it yet. I completely forgot. Okay. You want to read another question? What are you going to read? Oh, no. Irvin or Stockton Irvin had that. The, he's having a kid question. Yeah, that was it, dude. That's All right. everything else was pretty. There's one guy who asked 74 questions. Well, pick one of them. Uh, okay. Like all in the same email or did he send you multiple emails? Um, He sent me a bunch. Um, uh, no. Nah. Yeah, I mean. Up to you. Nah. You're, the, you're the one who's looking at him. I don't want to encourage 74 more emails. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't want to encourage that at all. Fair enough. Dude, how did you have fun getting back on the road in Columbus? Yes, absolutely. I had a really good time. It was it was good to be back on stage in a club and and uh for people who wanted to come see a comedy show. Guys, we we yeah, I love that club in Columbus. Yeah, me too. Um I am it's so interesting. I this set is really good that I'm doing, but I'm already I'm already tired of it. Crazy. It's so I'm like, I'm struggling. I think I'm going to get back into a little, writing a little more music. Okay. I miss doing more music because right now I'm down to like one or two songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was doing five or so. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to get back into a little more music. I, 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 I want, because I have so much fun with it. Yeah. It's a good time for you. So I want to make sure that I'm still having a ton of fun. Yeah. At my age, traveling the way we do. Mm. I want to make sure, Eric, sure every show is fun. I want to bring back the dance off. Yes. Oh my God. Um, I, I just want to bring back some things that added a little more energy and fun to the show because the truth of the matter is, is I tell long stories, man. Yeah. Yo, dude, this week, that dude who got up and started walking to the stage at Kimmel's. Yeah. That was fucking bananas. Yeah. I haven't been thrown on stage in a long time. But the fact that he started walking to the stage and nobody from security started to come yeah. was bananas. Oh, dude, I forgot to tell you. Yo, we brought Indiana Jones to the pet hospital. First of all, the, our vets are the best. The absolute best place, man. They're so patient with him. He is such an anxious, but so they were like, maybe you should stay in the room. We're going to cut his nails. Maybe you should stay in the room. <laughs> And, um, and we'll handle it. I'm like, okay, but he's kind of anxious without me. And they were like, yeah, but a lot of times they're more, he's more protective when he's around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, okay. That's what I was thinking. So we, your mom and I were in the waiting room and, the, and they were trying to clip his nails right, right on the other side of the wall. Yeah. It felt, it sounded like five people wrestling a bear. He was like, rawr, 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 and there would be like, goo, 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 goo. Sound up against the rawr, 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 hilarious. And just it really was the oh my arms look pretty good. Um, it was so funny. His muzzle came off. We needed to muzzle him because yeah, he's I got to muzzle him. Fucking crazy. We have to muzzle Milo. It was. I was and and here's what was the best part. He was going insane, like Jacob. I should have recorded the noise. Yeah. Insane. But they were so nice and so calm. They were like, you okay, buddy? You done? You still go to the same one? Yeah. We yeah, love that. One. We go there too. It was like, they were, it's what's called Seven Hills Pet Hospital. Correct. Here in Vegas. And they are the absolute best. Yeah. The fact that they were so patient with my little buddy, when he legit did, when he came back in, his eyes were like the widest. I go, how'd the shots go? They were like, do you think we tried to give him shots? Can <laughs> After you? that? Yeah, they were, we could barely trim his nails. His they, nails were getting out of hand. Oh, do we, we trimmed him. But I had to hold him for the shots. For the shots, he was fine. He just looked at me. Yeah. Interesting. It, it was, a, it was did, and I, did I also tell you, please, animal people, please help me with this. He and I were walking in the neighborhood, and there was this hawk dive bombing us like like over and over again like four times as we walked and once we hit a certain spot it stopped and flew back to where it started but coming down with the yeah now never got us but fucking it was a still definite warning and i'm walking you know down you know he's peeing on the side of the road oh i might have a thought yeah he might have been near a nest I, that's what i was thought but but like we can't be the only people that Walk that that nest must have been in somebody's yard. Does that yeah. mean it's dive bombing everybody that goes into the house, or everybody that walks by the house? 
that eagle is fucking dive bombing talons out. You know, I did my, you know me, dude. When I, if I get started by an animal, I definitely jazz hand. Yep. But you know, my one way to, that I try to scare an animal, I go, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it did not scare the hawk. No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, I think the hawk could smell my fear. Definitely. I, I wish I wasn't so much of a pussy when it came to that stuff. I mean, you, you can't pussy. really, I mean, yeah, sure. But also like hawks are big birds with very large talons. That, this is all I was thinking. Yeah. But like, so, I mean, I think everybody would be kind of, you know, scared in that situation. I wouldn't be happy. I would have been, I would have, honestly, I would have, would have grabbed my hat or like something and started swinging at it. it, it How close was it to you? Uh, it, it was making itself very menacing. Because it would fly, right? And it you would hear, and look up, and it was, I don't know, five feet, six feet? Wingspan-wise? No, too close to me. Oh, oh, oh. oh. With its little thingies out. That's cl closer than I would like it to be. Dude, 20 feet is closer than I would like it to be. Yeah, in the sky, circling is where I'd like it to yeah, be. Yeah, I just want to see it. It's majestic. Yeah. But but it scared the fuck out of me. It scared me so much that on the way home we took a different route. Probably a good good idea. I was I and I felt again like such a pussy that I but I was I didn't tell your mom about it. <laughs> I, well, we're gonna clip it and send it to her. And why did you sing song you that? Because I like sing songing. What sing are you what are you gonna do with sing song podcast? Whenever you want me to do one, and I will do one right now for the last 10 minutes of this show. A little pitchy. I, how could you? Why would I be pitchy? There's no pitch to hit. So you're not sing songing anymore. I was trying. Mm, damn it. Yeah, I knew. By the way, I knew I would get you on that <laughs> right away. Yo, that hawk story reminds me of something way less scary than a hawk, but just as funny. Actually, might be funnier. So Sherman Oaks Castle Park in LA, yeah, right? So Sherman Oaks Castle Park, where we used to live, was like a, a mini golf course. It's an arcade. There's batting cages. It's like a place we used to live down the street from, but also like we love to go to. At one point in time, I think it was my uh, summer before going into college. So I was 18. It was 2015. During that summer, they had signs all around uh, one of the courses, and it said, beware of territorial bird. They, it has a nest here, and it will come down and like swoop at you. And so I legit sat at this hole for about 40 minutes and just watched people pass me. And every time someone got to the point where that sign was, this bird was in and out, in and out, like, like actually going after to peck people's heads. It was so fun to watch. I ended up just walking around and going to the next hole, but I was like, that was really worth my 40 minutes. Like I, I had a really good time. There is a type of bird that will do that. That was in our neighborhood on Matillaha. It would come and swoop down at Rocky. There must have been a little nest, but it'll peck your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we also had squirrels throw oranges at us. Almonds. And half-eaten oranges. We didn't have an orange tree. In our front yard? Yeah, we did. No, we did not. At Matilla. In the front yard. There was no orange tree. Oranges? There was an almond tree. That was dead and cut down. I'm talking about in the front yard, in the grass. Well, right it out, wasn't dead when we moved in. Right outside my window was an orange tree. Wasn't that lemons? It was one of them. Well, I mean, there's two different. Yeah. Okay. My point. But we, yeah, I, it was definitely oranges. Yeah. It was definitely oranges because I had them throw half eaten oranges. You would me. find half eaten in the front yard for yeah. sure. Remember that house where we had gr grapefruits and avocado tree? Yes. Dude. Can An I avocado say tree, by the way? Like. Yeah. But you know what? We didn't know about the avocado tree. Huh? So really easy to fall out of it. We, we were, <laughs> we had, you know, a, um, uh, uh, land, land gar gardener. Is that what, it, is that what we call him? Sure. Yeah. Uh, he, a, a company that would come over and finally he asked me one day, he goes, Hey, and I said, yeah. And he goes, do you mind if I grab some of these avocados? Cause the tree was, first of all, I, I thought avocados grew on a bush. I don't know why, but I pictured an avocado bush. You know pineapples grow out of a bush? No idea. No, no, I'm telling you, you know. Like, oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. But avocado tree, I had no idea it was going to be so big. And there were hundreds of avocados on this tree. Yeah. And the guy was like, hey, can I pick some? I go, they're not ripe. And he said, they don't ripen until you pick them. And I go, uh, 
I was like, this is the worst avocado tree ever. <laughs> Nothing ever gets ripe on the tree. I didn't know that. I don't know if it's true, but it definitely felt true for that tree. So we basically, I was like, come take as many as you want. And he came in, he took, felt like a hundred one day. Probably only hit a half the tree. There was, that was such a massive was tree. gigantic. But our backyard, because it had grapefruit, it also had lemon and it had avocado. But it was like a grocery store for rodents. You would come in the backyard in the morning and they would just be eating fruit all over. Like Everywhere. they had a fucking party in the backyard. Yeah. Remember also at Matillaha though, like, so we lived on the back property, right? It was like a double for, for everybody. So I don't know why I'm explaining it to you. But where we lived on Matillaha, which is like where I grew up, my what I consider my childhood house. Yeah. It was a double property. So it was a long driveway with a house in the back and a house in the front, but it was two separate properties. Do you remember that time where on the front property on the lawn, there were just body parts of cats showing up for a week? Yeah. First it was a head. Then it was an arm. Yeah. Or like a, a leg, whatever. And then it was another leg. Yeah. And it was just like, but they were like whole pieces too. It was so, it was so, it was so strange. Still never to this day figured out what that was. Yeah. It was kind of weird. Cause it would be weird. Like some people for an were like, animal to do that, to leave a whole piece in the same spot. It was like three out of four days. It was like one, one break one. It happened also quickly. It felt like maybe somebody was trying to send a message to our front neighbor. It felt like someone was trying to curse us. Dude, do you remember, were you walking with us when that, we saw that cat filleted open? Oh, by the two coyotes? No, I think it was you and Dan Wolf. Yeah, we were walking, dude, and, and Dan was like, oh, somebody left a stuffed animal out. And as we got closer, it was, a cat had been filleted perfectly down the middle and flipped open. Yeah. And I, we were like, what the fuck? Yeah. And it looked across the street and there was just a pack of coyotes just staring at us. And Wait, I was like, yay, hey, listen, guys, we don't want your food. No. We're not eating this cat. Nope. I, I, yeah, I had Chinese last night. I don't need cat again tonight, Jesus. you know? I, I, I would be stunned if I haven't eaten cat or pigeon at some point in time in my life. Pigeon, I would agree with. Why are you putting pigeon ahead of cat? I just feel like, I feel like pigeon makes more sense than cat. I want to hear from you, our fans. Do you think it's more likely in your life you've eaten pigeon or cat? I think, I think horse is definitely up there as well. I think that's harder. I think in Canada, they eat horse, don't they, Matt? Yep. I just thought I'd ask you because I knew you were going to know the answer. <laughs> He's more knowledgeable of stuff, though. That's who I would have asked, too. Can you Google do they eat horse in Canada? Whose horse is that? And I don't want to piss off my Canadian fans because we have so many great Canadian fans, but I feel like I've heard that people eat horse in Canada. And I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, but I think horse meat less likely here because it'd be harder to get away with that. I think, mm -hmm. you know, is it legal in Canada? Is that right? I think maybe. Just pulling it up right now. So it says, uh, some Canadians eat horse meat, especially in Quebec, uh, where it's available in butcher shops, grocery stores, and high-end restaurants. High-end restaurants? Mm -hmm. Do you know there was a restaurant in, um, where I grew up called Judy's. And I think once a meet, once a year they had what was called like exotic animal week and you know, giraffe or whatever, but, what? but, but like, I was always like, this could just be cat. Yeah. Do, do you know, it could be, how do you know? Yeah. You just, it's an alligator, but you could call it a hippo or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Remember that time we tried to buy a shark from the grocery store and cook it at home? Shark, swordfish. What was it? Swordfish? Swordfish? Yeah. You can't buy shark in a store. Fucking right you used to be able to. Really? Yeah. No shit. I remember in college, I tried to impress a woman and I had her over and, um, and I made shark tacos. And uh, this was before I knew better. <laughs> um, but that was also in a house. Oh my God, dude, this house. Okay. First of all, me and my two roommates, we had three dogs. We had Bud, my St. Bernard. St. Bernard. We had Ben. Ben was a Doberman that was taller than Bud. It was the biggest Doberman I've ever seen in my life. A massive Doberman. Um, Bud, Ben, and, and Bob. What kind of dog was Bob? A little mutt. Yeah, I like it. And you gotta have a little one. We had this fence in the backyard, and um, we would leave them outside. 
And, and by the way, we were college kids. So with the front yard, we mowed because we had to, because it was a rental. But the backyard, honestly, it looked like the Serengeti. <laughs> when you would see, you, there were parts of the yard where you couldn't see the St. Bernard or the Doberman, but you could see the grass moving. It's like a lion stalking its It prey. was so fucking Hilarious. funny, man. Not only that, all three dogs had such crazy fleas that my one of my roommates wore fisherman plastic waders and flea collars around his wrists. And when he wore the waders and walked through the house, you could hear the fleas bouncing off of them. Bah, 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 Whoa. Bah. It was fucking crazy. And that, close. that was towards the end of, that was when we were all moving out. But this was also a place where, okay, this is also a place. I think I know this story. Where we didn't wash the dishes. We just ended up after a while throwing them out and getting new dishes. <laughs> We were just like, fuck. Were paper plates not a thing? Uh, I think, I forget why we, I think we ended up eventually going to paper plates. We also like, this house, it was just a bunch of gross dudes, man. This was also the house where that grown woman came to pick me up in her minivan when I was like 20. Oh, facts. Okay. Oh, that was amazing. Um, But these three dogs in the backyard, so there was, we, they would, we'd come home and they'd all be filled, just muddy. Head to toe mud. No mud in the backyard. Head to toe mud. No mud in the backyard. This happened repeatedly. So one day we pretended to leave. One of us stayed behind and looked out the window in the back. And what would happen was, is my dog would stand by the side of the fence and Bob would jump off of his back over the fence. The little one. The little one. Ben would clear the fence. And my dog would lean on it and just walk over it. Oh, my God. They would walk across the street to the golf course and just swim in the pond and come back and pretend like they never left. Except they were head to toe mud. Dude, it, like, that, it just reminds me of that movie, like, The Secret Life of Pets. Like, they, ha they have their own mind and consciousness. And they're like, hey, you know what might be fun? Jailbreak. Let's go. Pond. But can you imagine being on the golf course and seeing, the, first of all, the biggest, no joke, the biggest Doberman you've ever seen? Like, so taller than a St. Bernard, but how much, like, how much do you think he weighed? Oh, dude, he was thick. Thick boy? But he was just the dopiest dope. Yeah. He was do, 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 the dumbest dummy dum dum. And my buddy, you met Steve Walco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. before our show at the Gramercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was his dog. Gotcha. He was the biggest dope and the, just the gentlest little d big dude. But when you saw that, if you're teeing off on the third hole and you see my, at the time, my dog was probably 145, 150 pounds. 50 of those pounds were his head. Dude, he was giant. Yeah, big guy. But if you saw that dog running down the fairway with the fucking Doberman, you were not psyched about teeing off. No, 100%. But the, we, we, we finally found out because we were like, well, why are they getting muddy? Um, we walked out the front door of the house as we were looking around and um we found out that the golf course was the by the way for sure bob the little one was the leader of that group bob it's so funny bob was that was bob's idea bob was like hey yo get over here i'm gonna hop on your back i'm gonna go see what's over here I, I will tell you the three of those dogs combined had one brain cell yeah they were the dumbest threesome of all time like the three stooges bob was the dog that used to just run around under their bodies just ha, 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 ha. and my dog man just wanted to eat and, and sleep. ben was just the dumbest fucking dog you've ever met in your life but hey, so sweet before we get out of here i want to say one thing can we stop naming dogs people names bob ben and bud bud i can bud's fine and also if you're gonna name a dog a people name make it kevin kevin's funny for me but like can we stop? Like, we went to the shelter the other day and there was a dog there named Mark. And I was like, yeah. Why? Maybe Max, too? Max How about is cool. Nick. Yeah. What, what are we, why are we naming our dog Mark for? I like, think, I think full names is weirder, like David. I think people names, period, are weird. Kenneth. Like, pick a pet name. Have some fun with it. I like, think Kenneth is a good name. Kevin. Kevin is good for me. Like, because I just always think at the, if you're at a park and be like, hey, Kevin, get the fuck over here. Like, just yelling Kevin at a dog makes me laugh for yeah. some reason. Um, and Max, I can, I can work with Rex is really not, 
I've met a couple. That's a dog. That's a dog's name. I met a dude named Rex. Yeah, Rex Grossman. Night. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, that's my only thing. Stop naming your dogs people names. I, I, you know, as I talk about San Antonio, so many memories rush back about, dude. I had never been to a trap house before. I had never experienced anything like that before. Texas makes sense though. I uh, well, I I just wanted some weed. Yeah. And at the time, that was where it was happening. Yep. Walking into one of those places, bro. They're nuts. Yeah. And like, because it was trap house, but there was hookers. It was That's like. trap house, I think. It was fucking crazy. Yeah, it's, a whole, it's a whole different world in that house. Dark. What a dark, dark energy. I remember the first bag of weed I bought in San Antonio. I bought off this dude who, and he had a Doberman that was not as nice and not stupid. And he goes, hey, I'm going to leave the room for a second. She's going to watch you. And he said, don't move too quick. And I sat there sweating, dude. This dog was closer than I am to you. Just like this? Growling. Oof. I don't like that. Dude. Nah, I'm out. And the guy comes back. And he clearly did that on purpose. 100%. And felt like he was gone for three hours. It might have been... Four minutes. Mm -hmm. But he came back with a weed and I said to him, I go, he goes, here you go. He goes, I'll see you again. I go, no, you won't. Yeah. He goes, no, you're going to like the weed. I go, yeah, but I don't like that. I just soiled myself on your couch. Couldn't you have taken the dog with you? Yeah. Dude? Yeah. Well, no, the dog is, is an intimidation factor. It's hundred percent what I it mean, was. I know what it was. Yeah. Yeah. That's but what I, I, that's I walked in with my take... khaki shorts and polo shirt. What in my, in my, this is when I was dressed in khaki shorts you never saw khaki short, polo shirt. I'm so glad I didn't. Dude, khaki shorts, polo shirt, spike hair up top, um, and penny loafers. That's frat boy Josh Wolf. For sure, dude. Yeah, I'm so glad I've never seen it. Was, it was meathead Josh Wolf. And by the way, I, 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 mean, I like a good meathead, man. I like a good meathead. Meatheads are funny. As sh meatheads are funny. I love a meathead sense of humor. I think people mistake meatheads for misogynists. I do not believe the two are the same. Fair enough. I think a meathead is a meathead, man. And we laugh at farts and we, and we, and we like, you know, we do stupid shit to our friends yep. and, you know, we, you know, put peanut butter in each other's underwear. We do meathead stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's all in good fun. That, that to me doesn't feel misogynistic. I think there's two different things. I love a good meathead, man. They're By the funny. Way, pause. You love a good meathead? Yeah, dude. What? I do, man. I think, I think meatheads get a bad rap. I think men in general get a bad rap. I, uh, I think men in general get a bad rap. Now, I will I, say this. I will say this. Every war in history has probably been started by a dude. Uh, and we've done a lot of terrible shit. Yeah. But I, 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 so I, has everybody. I will say, I, I would like to elaborate on your, you think dudes get a bad rep. I think, yes, I think there are a lot of dudes in today's day and age based on like who they are as people, morals and whatnot, who give the general, like general overall other men a bad rep, a hundred percent. But I think that the rep right off the bat, like, is, I don't know, not earned, but like, I get it. Yeah, I get it for what? You, but, 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 but like, I could sit here and point out all the, listen, dude. And I know I'm going to catch shit on this and who gives a fuck, but we excuse and as we should hormones in women for behavior and things that happen, right? We don't get a pass for testosterone. That's not a hormone that fucking controls your body. Are you kidding me right now? Okay, sure. We don't get a pass. It's it, it, for somehow it's a, a knock on who we are personally, as opposed to something that's in our body. Look, I would not tell a woman about her hormones because I've never lived in your body. I don't know what it does to you, how, how it might affect your mood, how it might, fuck, how yeah. it might make you act. You've never had testosterone like that sometimes that's meathead shit yeah you know what i mean so i i just think look man there's no doubt that 
uh, men have been responsible for some terrible shit, but everybody has. Yeah, a hundred percent. I also just like I like there there's a trend going around a little while ago where women you would go on TikTok and they were like, if you were stuck in the forest and stranded there, would you rather be stranded there with a man or a bear? And and all the women are always like, I'm taking the bear. Yeah, that's just dumb. Uh yeah, but also like with all the here's the thing, like Yes, women are capable of being serial killers and rapists and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, but not really. But not really, 100%. Yeah. When you see someone, like, all this, I, because Iman is so into true crime, you watch all this shit, you see all this stuff. It, 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 for me, it's not just testosterone. It's just straight psychotic. Like, it's just straight mental, Dude, there's, mentally there's wrong. no doubt. There's a lot of mental illness. There's 100%. no doubt. But so, like, I, like but so when you watch all that stuff, especially since it's so popular, true crime is right yeah. now, it's all dudes and like some, and like you watch it where people will kidnap someone and hold them hostage for seven years. And that, you know, like that movie with Jennifer, La or was it Jennifer Lawrence, the room where she had a kid like wild trapped in this basement. I don't by remember. Anywho, Brie Larson. Thank you. And so like that kind of shit, like I like, I, I get why dudes get a bad rep, but also at the same time, like it, it's, crazy to, it's crazy to take all this generalization from like the absolute extreme and bring it to kind of the general population. The, 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 I think you're right. There's no doubt that if you looked at some of the most horrific things, mass murderers, um, child predators, a, a lot of that is dominated predom by dudes. I, I, honestly, all, out of all the serial killer stuff like that, mass shootings, I've sure. never, never really seen a woman. What's the woman, the, the Charlize Theron, the role? What was the movie called? But there are not that many mass murders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's no doubt. There's another thing I think dudes get a bad rap about. I, I hate that guys are stupid. I would argue that we're not stupid, we're simple. Yeah, we are simple creatures. I, I, would, I would argue that we're not like, y y look, this is the, some of your mom and I's biggest arguments, right? Will be like, it's called monster. Yeah. So some of our biggest arguments will be like, okay, say she's trying to decide if she should or shouldn't do something. Right. Yo, dude, your mom is a very intelligent, well thought out, well spoken mm -hmm. woman. And she's going to think of every, every possibility. So she'll be like, listen, I need to ask you a question about should I, should not do this something. And she will give me this 15 minute well, eloquent soliloquy about like, and give me perfect arguments on both sides. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And she'll be like, what's your opinion? And I'll just answer something like, yeah, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's the answer to the question. But she's like, that's it. And that's the difference, right? Not stupid, just simple. You, I'm just answering. Yeah. yeah just yeah. because your question was 15 minutes long. Doesn't mean my answer needs to be, you don't need to know the reason why yeah, yeah, yeah. I say I wouldn't do it. I yeah. just wouldn't do it. Well, for me, can I, can I guess why you wouldn't do it? Or just like, just like, just like a basic. No, I mean, I'm not even going into a specific thing. No, about... no, no. I mean, but like what I would say is like, we're simple. So like to hear, like for Iman, it's the same way. Like she puts a lot of thought into every possible outcome. And when she explains all that, I'm like, it seems like a hassle to do what you, this thing, since you've, like there's so much thought put into it and so many different outcomes or variables, like it just seems easier to not do it. Like that's where the simple in me comes from, where it's like, it seems like a lot of effort. But yeah, my simple, and I understand that. And my, my simple is just like, but it's just like real basic. Yeah. Like it, it, it if you go down to a, a, a do, even if you, okay. At the base level sex, women are so much, no matter different about what they like and don't like. Yeah. Like it's, it's hard. It's a guessing game right off the jump. Yeah. It's like, you know, you have some women are like, I like it slow and keep it slow. I like it slow. And then another woman's like, punch me in the face. And right. you're like, what the fuck just yeah. happened? Right. So, and we're just like, Hey, this is my dick. Yeah. And, and so I would say I would replace us being stupid because I don't think we're stupid. I think we're simple. Yeah, we are simple creatures. And, well, look, we're not, you know, when, when you, when, when, when we get talked to, we're not digging for emotional information. No. Do you know, yeah. we're not, no, that's not what the, like, if we're in an argument and I know it drives your mom question crazy. I'm giving one word answers. I'm like, yeah, 
No. Yeah. 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 You know what? You know what? By the way, in an argument, you know what is the worst thing to say to somebody? I hear you. Oh, in an argument? Because when I say I hear you to somebody, that doesn't mean I agree with you. It doesn't even mean I'm listening. It just means that I heard what you I said. I hear the words that are coming out of your mouth. Yep. It's such a sneaky way, but I'll say I hear One you to people. Yeah, it's like giving someone a thumbs up. I'll say I hear you to somebody, and what I really mean is I hate this conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear you. I've said that to you a couple of times. Yep, a lot. I think I said it today. You might have. I think I said it right before we started the podcast, actually. Yep. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> All right. Tell everybody what the deal is. All right. Once, uh, like always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, we really appreciate the newbies, the oldies, and the future people who stop by. Thank you, as always, for supporting. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Um, yo, starting in September, we're going to be everywhere, every weekend, except Halloween. So go there. Go check the website. Check the tickets. Um, and again, uh, Hey Man Pod with three A's at gmail.com for we're giving out or he's giving out ten tickets a weekend is what you said ten tickets, yeah. And so with uh you know, yeah, send an email to the uh to the email. But this is like single moms. This is people and families who can't afford the tickets. This is what this is yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you uh, you know share your story with us, single dads too, by the way. Yeah, facts. So come come talk to us. Uh, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Uh, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Um, and thank you guys, as always. We appreciate you. Um, and like I always say, tell someone you love them today. Do someone nice. Do something nice for someone. Later. Later. Uh, hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.